Model Making Guru is sponsored by emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Modelmaking.Guru here. Hello, hello, and welcome to the first proper episode in my build series of the Bandai Perfect Grade 170 second scale Millemonum Yeah, flying hamburger. Welcome, welcome. This is, of course, my build for my very, very good friends and channel sponsors at emodels.co.uk, your one stop shop for all your model making needs. Okay, so before we get going, allow me to explain the basic plan, because in the last video I did an unboxing of the plan and kind of forgot to say anything about the plan. The basic plan is I'm going to build and paint this up as best I can. Now, it is a Bandai kit, it's a push fit kit, and therefore it's not a highly skilled build, because it's push fit together, everything will go together beautifully. It's wonderfully engineered, I don't expect to have many problems. All that being said, of course, for the build, we are going to need a certain amount of tools and equipment, so in a second I'll go through. But basically, we're just going to quickly whiz through, get the thing built, and then the real fun starts with the painting. Now, I do plan on doing as many sort of sub-assemblies as I can at first before we do the painting. I don't, I'm not going to paint stuff on the sprue, and I don't want a million billion parts on sticks to paint. What I'm going to be doing is putting stuff together in sub-assemblies. Now, if this was a fine mold Millennium Falcon kit, that's a glue kit, I'd know exactly how I was going to do it. I build everything and paint it. This is a bit different. Uh, I've, I've had a quick look through and I know there's certain things I can pre-assemble, such as, you know, the mandibles here. I can pre-assemble each of those and just completely, and then I can paint them. The, the upper and lower holes, not fully sure because I don't want to be manhandling them with all the little delicate parts on them and risk breaking anything off uh, on those. So we'll, we'll see how that goes as we go along. But the idea is to get everything built up into sub-assemblies, then we'll do the painting and then it'll be finished. So before we get going, let's have a quick look at some of the tools we might need. Now, we're not going to need a lot of tools. Like I say, this is a push fit build and it's Bandai, so we're not going to have to rely on a lot of filling and sanding and seam repairs and things like that. Very little of that. So the tools list is quite small, although I'm sure we'll probably add some as we go along. First of all, we're going to need something to get the parts off the sprues. Now, I've got here a couple of pairs of nippers. Uh, I've got a pair of God Hand nippers and a pair of Tamiya side cutters. Now, most likely, you will have a pair of these or something very similar. These on their own are absolutely fine. Don't worry about these so much. These on their own are absolutely fine. Any kind of nippers. I would suggest uh, to go for model making specific nippers, not just a pair of wire cutters from the DIY drawer downstairs. Cutters are designed to be as gentle as possible to the plastic and not cause lots of pulling and tearing and squishing and ripping. And ooh. So try and get some model making nippers. There's Tamiya ones, there's uh, Ammo ones, there's AK, there's loads of different brands that you'll be absolutely fine. As long as they're model making ones, they'll be nice and delicate. I do have a pair of God Hand nippers. You can, if you've got some of these, these are brilliant and we'll explain why I've got two as we go along. But don't worry if you can't get any of these. If you're in the UK like me, these are like hen's teeth. They're incredibly expensive and they're incredibly hard to get. My good friends at eModels don't actually stock these. There's nowhere in the UK you can get them. I was sent these uh, as a gift. But if you have got a pair of these, if you're outside the UK, especially if you're in the Asian territories and you've got some of these where it's easy access, get some of these, they are brilliant. So you'll need some nippers. Next up, we have our Stabity Stabity device. This is my Swan Morton number no. three scalpel uh, with a fresh blade. It's very important when you start a new project, always replace your blade. If you've got a knife where you can take the blade off and replace it, that's the best kind of modeling knife to have, either a modeling knife or in this case, it's a surgical scalpel. It's a medical scalpel, but it's absolutely fine. You want something where you can remove and replace the blade as much as possible because you will go through a lot of blades. Uh, I, for most builds, I'd, probably, I'd start with a fresh blade and it'd do me fine until the next build. For this one, because there's so many parts, I'll probably go through a couple of blades, if not more. But yeah, get yourself a nice sharp, either model making blade, or in this case, uh, a surgical scalpel and lots, big lots of packs of blades. Next up, we have some lovely tweezy, tweezy tweezers. These are my delicious God hand tweezers that were sent to me by my friend Kenneth in Australia. Uh, but have yourself a few sets of tweezers. There's all different shapes and sizes. I do recommend that you have a pair with nice, fine, pointy tips. Have a pair with sort of flat, broader tips for picking up larger objects and different shapes. And if you can get yourself a pair with the, 
the 90 degree corner at the end they're quite handy uh, there are a couple of the master tool sets available on the eModels website and lots of other makes and brands there's tons and tons of tweezers so go and check them out get yourself a goodly selection because the thin pointy ones aren't always the best shape for certain things and sometimes the big flat ones are a bit big and bulky to get into small corners so get yourself a good collection of the tweezers next up you'll want some kind of sanding solution i've just got here some sanding sticks uh, but you don't have to have sanding well, these are sanding sponges and sticks you don't have to have sanding sponges and sticks you can mix and match some people prefer to use just sandpaper i prefer to use sanding sponges uh, because these they're kind of squishy and they conform to if you try and sand something they'll they'll conform to the shape a bit better than just pure sandpaper but a selection of sponges and sanding sticks you can make your own you can put sandpaper over uh, say lolly sticks things like that but you, all you need to do is make sure that you have a good selection of sponges these are the ultimate modeling products ones you can get them from your models uh, all different shapes and sizes you want a good range from from a rough grit for uh, now the thing is with the ultimate ones i don't know what the grits are because they don't print them on the sanding sponges uh, but that's rough you can hear that and these are quite these are quite fine i'm going to guess this is maybe i don't know this could be 300 grit maybe 400 grit i don't know maybe 1200 grit this could be two or three thousand grit whenever you sand and we'll go through this whenever you sand you go from the roughest to the smoothest to get the, the best finish possible so have yourself a good collection of sanding sticks or sponges and along that note if you've got some Get yourself some very fine metal files as well you might not need these but they do come in handy not like big hardcore files that your dad might have in the garage anything like that they're a bit too harsh but especially modeling files you'll see them in store modeling files model making files very fine craft needle files these can be quite handy for certain jobs so have some of them to hand doesn't matter if you haven't got them because this will do the same job but this might just save your skin in a few places especially on very thin pipes of which we now last of all we have two tools which are completely optional but really really handy uh, first of all we have a scribing tool now this is the tamiya mark ii scriber uh, this is ideal uh, for wherever you have you see like here you've got on the grip here you've got these recessed little grooves there now there's a seam line that goes down the middle ironically there's a seam line that goes down the middle of the scribing tool or a mold line you can use this tool which i'll talk about in a second to get rid of that mold line but you can't use it to get into all these gaps this is where a scribing tool will come in handy we won't need this to scribe any panel lines these are usually you use this to scribe panel lines into the plastic if you've sanded them away we're actually going to use this if we need it to remove any mold lines that go into any recessed or grill details we might not need it i don't know yet but we shall find out so i would recommend it comes in handy anyway uh, but i would recommend a scribing tool of some sort and last of all we have uh, a mold line removal tool this is the citadel one but there's lots of other different ones available this is basically just uh, a big thick not particularly flexible metal blade that's designed for getting rid of those mold lines there you can see they're designed just for that and they're also good for getting rid of some uneven step finishes uh, you don't have to use one of these you can just use your modeling knife if you want to but the advantage this has is because the blade isn't flexible it's not going to leave scratches and skitter across the surface and leave scratches and marks so it's a bit of a neater solution than just using your blade but you don't need one of these you can get you don't need either of these but if you can get them it's really good so those are the tools we need we probably will need a few more as we go along i do recommend having uh, just some little tins and pots things like this we're going to need some of these so i've got a big collection of pots and tins that's very nice german chocolate uh, pots and tins and just things for storing parts in because we're going to have lots and lots of tiny parts to deal with and as you're working on say a subsection you might have 20 little parts have a little top of a this is the top of a cotton bud container or you know you've got a brush cleaning soap container anything you've got or plates or bowls where you can store little parts temporarily if you can get a tin with a lid even better because then it's safe and secure then you can put the bits in and then when the cat comes in the room and jumps on your workbench you're not going to lose all the parts to the carpet monster because the cat's battered them off the top of the desk in other news don't let the cat in the model making room uh, and last of all we probably will need some glue now this like i said it is a bandai kit it's a push fit kit you don't need to glue any of it however we probably will do because this is being built for e-models and it's got to go back to them to go into their display cabinet i'm going to need to transport it around i don't want little bits falling off so we are going to use some glues here and there uh, either for sticking little tiny parts on or even for filling a few gaps here and that i don't know yet 
Now I'm going to use two glues, uh, possibly three, but I'll, I'll use these two for now. Uh, I've got Tamiya Extra Thin and Tamiya, the regular Tamiya cement. This is fat and gloopy. We might not need it, but it's fat and gloopy and it's good for sticking things together that need to stick together quite quickly. It's good for load bearing corners and surfaces because it's got some stick to it. Uh, Tamiya Extra Thin is a welding cement. This is as well, but not as much. This is a welding cement. It melts plastic. It melts polystyrene and it melts the plastic together. So if you've got two pieces of plastic and you put them together like that and that push fit, they'll come apart. If you put this in there, it very slightly melts the plastic. So what were two pieces of plastic now become one single piece and you can't pull it apart without breaking it. So it's one of the strongest bonds you're gonna get with, with uh, polystyrene based plastic. So we're gonna use some Tamiya Extra Thin and some regular Tamiya Fat. You'll hear me call it fat, but it's fat and thin. Uh, and I think that's just about everything. Uh, what I'll do, if I come across anything else I might need as we go along, I will show you and we'll say, oh, I forgot, I didn't know about this, or here's an extra product I think you might need. So I'll do that as we go along. So what I shall do, without further delay, I shall stop talking. I shall stop tidying my desk and being, I'll, I'll, I'll stop doing that. Uh, I'll go and get everything ready and we'll actually make a start. Well, I'll show you quickly first some things in the instructions and then we'll make a start. Back in a moment. <coughs> Okay, so really quickly, something I want to show you in the instruction manual and something I've just spotted as well. So there's another tool I need to show you. When you get to each new page, before you start the building, come down to the bottom of the page and have a look. You'll see down here a load of symbols. Now, these are all symbols that are specific and unique to Bandai kits. If you're familiar with them, you'll recognize them and you know what they mean. But if you've never built a Bandai kit before, you won't have a clue. Uh, this gives you a quick look at the bottom of the page as to what specific instructions or call outs or warnings are on that specific page. So these symbols here relate purely to this page and you'll get to learn them. There are things like do this bit first, do the parts in this order, um, don't cut this bit off, glue here, pay attention, things like that. And I'll call these out as we go through. But before you do anything, come down to the bottom of the page and have a quick gander because it will tell you what warnings and call outs will be on that page. Now, another thing I've just noticed from everything I've seen about this kit, and like I said at the start, it's a no glue kit and Bandai push fit kits don't need glue. But there is some photo etch on this kit. And I thought, and from everything I've seen, you wouldn't need any glue for it. However, it turns out you're gonna need a tiny bit of glue. You can see here, there's a little symbol little brushy brushy symbol here it appears here when we're putting a grill on the cockpit part and it also appears on this page that i've handily marked uh, here when we're putting the grills on the engine at the back on the exhausts it's got it there again now i hadn't expected that and i hadn't realized we we're going to need some glue because as far as i knew all these parts and photo etch pieces were held in place by plastic components but i guess they're not or if they are these are just like reinforcing it with glue so it doesn't tell you anywhere in the instructions what kind of glue to use it just assumes you know what to do however you might not if you're putting photo etch onto plastic you can't use your tamiya thin or your tamiya thick that melts plastic there's no plastic in metal so you're going to need some ca glue or super glue or cyanoacrylate glue basically ca glue uh, and i've got here some thin ca other brands are available plenty in stock at e models we're going to be using some thin ca glue now you don't have to use thin ca glue i just quite like it for what i'm going to be using it for uh, i quite like it because it dries quite quickly and we can control it uh, but I'm going to be using thin. If you've got thin CA glue, you want to try and get yourself uh, a, a filament applicator. I don't really know what they're called. It's a bit of a nozzle that you put on the end and it takes it to like a hair width applicator so you can get a tiny amount of glue if you're using thin. If you're using a thick CA glue or a medium CA glue, uh, you can just use some glue on a cocktail stick instead. But if you've got the thin stuff, see if you can get some of the sort of hair thin, hair fine applicators as well. But we're gonna, I'll, I'll go into more detail on that when we get to that stage. But yes, we're gonna be using some thin CA glue. So anyway, enough nonsense. That's that bit. Let's get on with some building. We'll do a quick demonstration. I say we, oh, I don't know why I keep saying we, it's me doing it on camera. I will do a quick demonstration of how to get parts off the sprue and then we can assemble something. <laughs> wow, I take forever to get anywhere. Back in a moment. Right, so let's make a start with the cockpit. Now, if you've not seen one of my videos before, I do tend to angle them towards the absolute starter. So I will go through things that I know many of you will be like, why are you explaining how to do this? It's really obvious. 
but I like to assume that some people who are watching this may be absolute beginners. They've not seen any of my other stuff, and they've never made a model before. So I can't make that assumption that they know what they're doing. So I'm going to cover some obvious stuff, and I'm going to quickly look at getting things off of the sprues. They might think it's obvious, but it's not. And this is why we need all our nippers and cutters. Some people will just take parts off the sprues with a modeling knife. You can do that. It's damaging to the blade. It's a lot of hassle and effort trying to cut them off. And you can damage very delicate parts. And there's a lot of parts in this kit that are really delicate and you can't afford to be going in hacking around with a knife you want to get your nippers now remember I'm, I'm using two pairs I've got my nice expensive god hands and I've got my Tamiya side cutters here's what we're going to do this is the part this is the tree or the sprue and these are the gates where it, the part attaches to the sprue this is how it comes out of the injection molding machine you want to get it off now now the, the compulsion is just to get the nippers in there and cut away at the piece don't do that don't do that. What you want to do is get your the, the heavy, if you've got two pairs of nippers, if you haven't got two pairs of nippers, don't worry, just use whatever nippers you've got. I've got two. I'm going to use these heavy duty ones to get the piece off and then I'm going to use these to clean up. But if you've only got one pair, don't panic. The first thing you want to do is to get the part off the sprue is not cut right against the part. No matter how good your nippers, unless they're really, really, really expensive, they're going to mangle the plastic a bit. They're going to cause stress and tearing damage. So if you go right up to the part and snip, you could take a chunk out of the part and you don't want that. So what you want to do is get your, get your cutters, get the flat edge of the cutter facing towards the model part and just snip away. But leave a couple of millimetres just of the gate so you're not actually cutting into the part itself there we go so one more here and this is why you want your heavy duty cutters yeah because if i use that if i use these my god hands on those that would shatter the blade by now because they're not there for, they're not designed for such heavy duty things so you can see there we've got the part here we've got these big huge nubs nubs nub time so we want to get rid of these but we don't want to damage the piece underneath we want to make it look like it was never attached now this is where i'm going to go in with the god hands and what i'm going to do because these are such exquisitely fine blades i can actually go right up to the plastic like this and snip and i've still got work to do but with because they cut very delicately the the, the the blades they don't pull the plastic they just cut through it so there's very little stress and damage to the plastic so i can afford to go right up close however with the tamir nippers if i use those yeah i'd be i'd be mangling this plastic to shreds so i don't want to do that so again i can go in here I can now I'm making sure whenever you do use nippers don't even if they're just bog standard cheap nippers try to avoid cutting from the tip cut from the middle or the bottom of the blades because the tips are the thinnest weakest part and you might damage them so I'll just go in and I will snip it like that we'll get rid of these big nubs big nubs uh, right get rid of those okay so we've got those off so we just need to clean up now you can see here let's find one uh, now, I don't know if you'll see this because it's white plastic on a light background. Where's that nub? Uh, I can't remember where I took the nub from now. It's such a good cut. Do, do, do. Where is it? I've got to find it now. There we go. There's a nub here. I don't know if you'll see it, but there's a nub here. I'm moving I can move in closer now because I've got a special focus on my phone. There's a nub here. We need to get rid of this. Now, it's on a slightly curved surface, and I don't much want to go in with a sanding stick or a file and just hack away at it with that, because that will just flatten that surface, and I need to keep that curve. So, you can if you want to. I'm going to go a little bit more advanced than normal. You can if you want to just go in with a sanding sponge uh, and sand that away. I tend to do a little extra bit of work, though. Uh, I want to make it as small as possible, so if there's a little bit of a nub left, I'll go in with my modelling knife, and you can do this with, if you don't have the god hand nippers, or a very fine pair of nippers, you can do this stage after getting it off the sprue if you want. I tend to go with my blade, and I will follow the curve, and I will basically gently shave that nub off. Now, I'm doing this towards myself, but I'm an idiot, and I've been doing this for 40 years. Don't do it towards yourself. I can't, for the life of me, work away from myself, so this is how I have to do it. But if you're a younger builder, maybe get someone else to do this bit. Now I'm going to brace my thumbs together so I don't slip. All I'm going to do is gently keep this flat with the surface and just very gently, I don't know if you'll see this even shot, very gently I'm just going to shave that way. I'm not, I'm not digging into the plastic, I'm not putting on any pressure, I'm just shaving it away slowly just to get that as smooth as I can so I can minimise the sanding. There we go. 
yes i want to keep the sanding to a minimum now with this gray or light gray or white plastic with the bandai stuff it's quite forgiving uh, because when you stress the plastic it it stays the same color if this was black plastic and you did all this you might have stress white stress marks uh, but this light color plastic is a joy because you can file this so because the file is quite small i can go in and very very gently really i mean i can't stress how gentle this is really really gently i'm just gonna start filing that a little bit just to kind of get rid of it even more but i'm putting no pressure on at all and i'm only going in one direction this is the important bit you want to avoid lots of nasty filing marks so always go in one direction and i'm, I'm curving the blade i'm following the curve here because i don't want to carve a flat spot literally i'm just using the weight of the file there we go so that's now a little bit rough so i can go in with a sanding sponge and this is a medium i don't know what grade this is uh, and i'm just gonna again in one direction very gently try and smooth that down now i'm not sanding away the nub at this point the nub is pretty much gone at this point i'm sanding away any little marks left by the file and any little scratches i may have put in with the blade and i'm again going in one direction i'm following the curve of the part i'm going to hold it up to the light you can't see but i'm holding it up to the light to see how that looks and that looks a little bit rough it's a little bit scritchy scratchy so i'm just gonna a bit more of that i'm gonna go in with a slightly rougher grade i've got some sort of visible um file marks there so i'm gonna go in the rougher grade and just try and smooth those out i'm being very very gentle again this is almost no pressure now when you're sanding marks away you can go in more than one direction but very carefully because you're trying to smooth away any rough spots that the sanding's made so little circular motions like this are quite handy sometimes it's like a scratch on your windscreen in your car if you get a scratch on your windscreen it looks like a scratch if you get a billion scratches on your windscreen and they're all crossing over each other it just looks frosted that's the effect we want we want to hide the scratches by just covering them in a billion other scratches so it just looks more like a, a texture than a scratch so that's been done then we'll go back with the the sponge let me get a slightly rough one there we go we'll just do that and we're just aiming to get rid of any obvious sanding marks and the nub now if you're a gumpler builder and you're not painting your gumpler you'd go further than this you do polishing as well with very fine polishing sticks because you'd want to get rid of any text you want it to look like bare plastic but because we're going to be painting this it doesn't matter what it looks like in terms of if you can see it's not as shiny as the rest of the model i don't care it's going to get covered in primer so all i care about right now i'm going to hold it up to the light is is there a nub and can i see obvious sandy marks and i cannot really there's a very slight sanding mark there. now you won't see on camera here but there is a very slight sanding texture but i know just from experience that that is so fine that the primer is going to hide that completely so that is how you get bits off the sprue and clean them up so i'm going to go around and get all this cleared up i've got all these parts out so far uh, i've not got all the parts off for the cockpit because some of them are tiny and i'll forget which is which uh, and what i'm going to do I've, i have a plan now i'm going to basically get everything built before we do any painting so i'm going to assemble the cockpit the cockpit tube but there are some bits i can't do because i like the photo etch that goes here i can't attach that and glue it yet because i need to take all this apart again to paint the cockpit later on but i want to get everything built and assembled first so uh, i'll go and get all these bits cleaned off and then we'll do some sort of assembly that we might need to take apart again later it's the beauty of a push fit kit you can take it apart again later back in a moment i can't see the other nubs now i don't know where they were there's one okay so this pile of shenanigans here is all the interior parts for the cockpit interior now like i said keep in mind we're going to put all this together then a lot of it we're going to take apart again so we're not going to do any painting right now we're just going to roughly put things together uh, so what we're going to do get people in their seats first uh, and i'm going to have i think obviously in the pilot seats it's got to be uh, han in his left hand chair or right hand chair depending on your point of view get in there 
So Han can go in there. I'm just going to put him in loosely because he's a devil to get out. And of course, Chewy. Get in, Chewy. There we go. So that's them two in their seats. Now I know his, his feet look kind of weird on Han. Look at that. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, Bandai bless them. When they're at this kind of size, they're not they're not the best at figures. But you're not going to see that anyway. It doesn't really matter. So Han and Chewy, and then we have the back uh, seats, which are ejector seats from a, fly, a fighter plane. That I forget which fighter plane it was, but they are real life ejector seats. Uh, these were Porsche seats. If I remember on the on the physical set, these were Porsche seats. I should say not Porsche. It's Porsche. Porsche seats and these were ejector seats from a plane which I'll probably put in a caption down here somewhere because I remember afterwards so in the back seats we're going to have uh, C-3PO and Luke the farm boy Lukeness yeah I like putting 3PO in because 3PO is just great it's a nice little the cockpit is going to be dark although there's a lighting in this kit it's a lit kit the cockpit is going to be dark so he's be a little nice little bright spot plus it's easy to paint anyway so there's those two front and back seats uh, we have the dashboard and Gafart. Now I'm going to do my space helmet of seeing for this because these are tiny. We have the two yokes. I've got a yoke for you. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, yes, two yokes are going to go in here. Now we are going to, uh, we're going to glue these. No, we're not going to glue these in. We're just going to push them in place. So they need to go over a certain way up like that. So it's just a case of putting the peg into the hole. I say it's just a case. <laughs> As with most things, they're so small, it's not that easy. Get in, get ooh. I could use tweezers at this point, but if I use tweezers, it's asking for things to ping off into the carpet of doom. Yes, because nothing comes back from the carpet of doom. There we go, that's going to go in there. Now, I don't want to glue these in right away because, for all I know, uh, let's have a look at the instructions. Uh, it might be that once these are in, you can't actually get the figures in. So I don't want to make that assumption right now. Oh no, I could glue those in. I can glue those in because the, there's tons of room. So let's get them pushed another way. Oh, bent one. There you go. Knit one, purl one, bend one. Careful now. Get those pushed in without bending them too much. There we go. Be careful of those. I'm not concerned about being able to paint them because that'll be quite easy to paint. So, a uh, little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin. Remember, we're using Tamiya Extra Thin for this. It's what we call a, a caterpillar action cement or capillary action, which means it's so thin I can put the parts together first and then just touch the glue to them. And that glue will suck down into the gap. And that's all I need. Now, you don't have to glue these. I'm just gluing these because um, I want to make sure nothing comes out ever. Because once this is finished, it's going off to your models to sit in their cabinet. The last thing I want is for something in the cockpit to fall off and I can't get to it. Now, I'm not going to glue these bits together. Because, of course, if I glue the console to the seats, I'll never, ever get the figures in because they have to sit on. So I'm just putting that together loosely for now. When it comes to painting this, we'll, we'll probably... Probably won't actually because it's it's a nice firm grip and I need to get the figures in. So this is part of this project because it's a push fit kit. This is where this project is brilliant. And I will finish a sentence at some point without dumping it halfway through. Because it's a push fit kit, we have a certain freedom to pull things apart halfway through. So we can change our plan. So a lot of this is I'm building and planning things and going so i'm looking at this and thinking how am i going to paint this well i'm going to airbrush the basic base colors and then dry brush some colors on top and i can brush paint the control yokes but do i put the figures in first no i can't i've got to paint the figure separately i don't want to paint the figures in the chair so i've got to paint the figure separately and then put the figure in the chair however i can't get the figure in the chair when the chair is assembled and attached to the console because i couldn't get the figure in there so i'm planning ahead so if you if you see me going off on tangents and and like talking about what I'm going to do and maybe I'm going to do this or that. That's because always you want to be planning and considering your options and thinking ahead in some assemblies. When this whole build is done and we're ready to start the painting, we're going to have basically, I think, the upper hall, the lower hall, the cockpit and the interior. And the first thing we're going to paint is interior. And when that's done, we can then paint the rest of the ship. So you'll see some sub assemblies, but not many. That's there. Now we want to get these parts together. Now, here's a handy tip for you. This is a push fit kit, like I said. Uh, and like a push fit kit, it means you can put it together and take it apart again. However, 
you will find that Bandai kits, if you never made one, they are beautifully engineered to go together fantastically and grip like a leech. So where you've got things like a peg here and a hole here, once you put that together, you might get it apart or you might just as easily snap that peg off. So here's a handy tip. If you want to be able to easily take things apart again, because we will glue this later on, when you get a peg, uh, I'll demonstrate on a bigger piece of sprue just so you can actually physically see what I mean. What you want to do, I'll just get a piece of sprue off for you. What you want to do is cut the tip of the pegs off. So imagine this is the peg that's going into a hole. So this, this here represents uh, that peg there. And imagine that's going into this hole on this side. If I jam these together, that peg will be like, mm, it won't want to come apart. It'll be like, no, 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 gripping like a leech, not going anywhere. What you can do is if you get your peg and you just snip the end off, 45 degrees like that, then when you attach the parts together, there's a little less surface area and a little less friction and it will be easier to take apart. Now, if you're just going to build this and not have to take it apart, you don't need to worry about that. But because I want to get this cockpit apart later on and paint it, I need to make sure I can take it apart. And this is a handy tip from the world of Gumpler. Now, I'm not going to use these for that because these are tiny little pegs. So I am going to use my God hand. Because if you've got some nice Zurons or something like that, remember you can't get these in the UK easily. Uh, you can use those. Don't use your heavy duty ones because it will just destroy the peg altogether. And I've got to be very careful because I don't want to break my nippers and I don't want to take too much of the peg off either. So let's just try and get a little tiny there you go and that one there we go now it does mean that this thing might fall apart at a moment's notice but that's fine because i want to be able to take it apart again that's the whole point uh, but i can if i need to because i've got the option of it i can glue them together we will touch make these two together like this you'll see with the fumbling and the dropping that'll be good so that i can see now they go together it's still quite a tight fit but i know that i can get those two easily apart now if I'd just left those pegs as they were, I'd have to get my spudger tool out and everything to get them apart. In fact, I've already done it before and it's like, oh. So those go there. Now you see they don't fit together brilliantly. Doesn't matter. That's not a problem right now. We'll get those two together. So that's the cockpit bucket. This then needs to sit down on top. Now, if you've not built a Bandai kit before, if you've never had that pleasure, I can't see actually what I'm doing. I've got to get this box. What well, we've got to get on here now. This needs to go. Oops, knocking the camera. My apologies. This needs to sit on there. There's a little sort of tab. There's a slot here and there's a set of tabs in there. So it's a bit fiddly. Yeah, if you've never had the experience, the joy of a Bandai kit before. Trust me, you are missing out big, big time. Let's see if we can get this in. They can be a little fiddly to build but they're not hard, they're not complicated. There's no real skill in building one of these kits. They just, oh, and that didn't work. Let's try that again, shall we? Actually, did we snap a peg then? No, we didn't. Good, thought for a moment, then we snapped a peg. Whoa. Uh, they do go together. <laughs> Here's me saying, they go together brilliantly. If you never built and then I'm trying to struggle to get it together. They do fit together perfectly. It's just, they can be quite fiddly, but there's no real skill involved in these kits. It's making me a liar now, isn't it? Do you know? I'm trying to do the good PR here for Bandai. There we go. No, it's, it's not, not really that hard. Yes, they. although sometimes some of the bits can be a little fiddly like that because it's dark and I can't see, um, they do go together beautifully. So you could build this thing with no glue at all and it would just, it would just work. Now, the back wall of this is clear, uh, as you'll see because there is lighting now there is going to be a modification i need to do to this because although this is a lit cockpit unfortunately it's not a brilliantly lit cockpit as in technologically it's not brilliantly lit i don't mean brilliant as in a bright light i mean brilliant as in they've not done a very good job of figuring out how the lighting is going to work so the back wall is clear because it's supposed to allow the lights to shine through however the way they've designed the the fitting of the lights the way the lights are fitted in doesn't really make any sense in terms of allowing light to come through. Why is this one not going in? Having some issues with this. This it's because that is actually solid. That's a hole, and that one isn't. That's a hole. 
that's very strange. Let me see if I can cut through it. Is it just... How very bizarre. It's got a skin of plastic over it. That explains it. How very strange. My files are too large to go through, but for some reason, this hole had a skin of plastic over it. Oh, well, that explains. See, it wasn't me. That's the first time in my entire life I've ever come across anything like that on a Bandai kit. That's very strange. Right, let me go and clear that out and then we'll get that assembled. Right, sorry about that. That was fun. Yes, that was very, very weird. I had to clean out that socket because that socket just was completely like solid. Uh, it wasn't, it was like a thin film of plastic, so I had to kind of scrape it out with the knife blade uh, and I sanded both the little lugs down just a little bit because it was really tight fit and I was having trouble getting this panel back off again now it is a still a tight fit but I can push it from from that side when I need to take it apart anyway like I was saying the whole point of this clear wall is there's gonna be light coming from behind and we're gonna paint it and then either drill some holes or scrape some paint away for some of the light to shine through from the back wall to suggest all the lights and stuff uh, on the wall. Now you do get water slide decals for all the cockpit details. I've had to think about it. I'm not going to be using them because there's no way you can apply water slide decals to these rough lumpy surface. You can see like the, the control panel on the dashboard there on the console and on the walls. Decals wouldn't work. They just wouldn't work. Decals need a reasonably flat surface. So if I was going to use the water slides, I'd have to sand all those surfaces down. I don't want to do that there's lots of nice detail on there so we're going to paint the interior anyway and it is going to be dark but we'll, we'll get there so yes you might need to i don't suspect you'll have that issue that i had but if it doesn't fit very well i just sanded down scraped down a bit of these nubs on either side just take them from this shape to that shape and sand a bit of the edge away just to make it fit <sighs> right what's next next we have to do a bit of bodging now talking about the lighting we have to do a bodge because how this works the cockpit goes in here like this you see like that you see and the lights sit in here now the problem is there's this great big wall of plastic here so when the lights sit in here they'll point up and the only thing they'll illuminate is these two little slots of plastic these two tabs here the idea is they hit these two and if you haven't painted them over those are the bits that glow like a light but you've got all the other lights the whole point is you want to light the cockpit not just have two strips of light at the back so we're going to basically massacre this the other thing we need to do is that the lights sit in i'm not going to install the lighting now but the lights sit in these two little plastic bits here and the wiring goes in the bulbs go in and this sits on the back to cover them up and they've got this tiny tiny little hole this tiny little pinprick of a hole not even that i want the bulbs to be glowing bright as the sun so it can shine through here and whatever we've painted and shine through all the little holes we'll drill on little bits to scrape off to make it lots of nice bright lights because there's gonna be no lights on the walls it's just gonna be at the back wall so yeah this is this is nonsense so what we're gonna do we're gonna take some old crappy cutters now we're not gonna use our nice expensive ones uh, in fact even those are too small let's go for it these aren't crappy ones, but they're heavy duty. These are my Citadel cutters. We need to get rid of all of this because this doesn't actually serve a purpose. Once this is in, that wall doesn't really serve too much of a purpose. We're going to leave this middle bit. We're just going to take away these two pieces here. So the first thing we're going to do is just literally hack away at this. So that, that, and a bit of that. It always feels quite bad to be doing this to 300 quid's worth of kit, but hey what can you do so there you go cut that down and we'll cut this one down as well we're not going through any of the structural elements just this little bit of plastic there we go we can snap that down it's not a supporting wall it's not anything that anything attaches to it's just this little bit here so we can snap that back doesn't need to be pretty because we're never going to see it uh, I might give it a quick zizz with the sander just to make sure there's nothing sticking out and getting in the way. So that's now going to go on there. And the beauty of this now is that, as you can see here, the light will now shine into the recess bits down there. It's not just going to be these two sort of flat tab things. You're going to have lights coming all the way through. Yes, you've got the solid bit in the middle, which is a bit of a shame. But I'm going to get maybe the top of the light on the door. And that's about all I need so that's gonna that's gonna sort that out and for these what I'll need to do I'll just need to like I was before get my knife I've got a drill actually I'll get my pin vise out welcome to my drawer of many things might get my pin vise out I'll do that now 
to save myself some work. I'll get my pin vise. Uh, and we'll get, I won't use that pin vise, I'll use my other pin vise. Welcome to my drawer of many things. My other pin vise, which can take a big fat bit. I like a nice big fat bit. Uh, now there you go, there's a nice big fat drill hole. I don't need to clean it out completely, but I want to make it a big bit wider. So we'll get our big fat drill bit and our big fat chuck. I hope chuck, I hope chuck. How are you all? I hope you're all well while I'm doing this. I hope everybody's well and having fun. Uh, not great times at the moment, of course. We're all stuck indoors. But hopefully this finds you in good humours and good spirits. I'm having a jolly good time. A project like this with a batrillion parts. Yeah, a good thing for the situation right now when we can't really go anywhere and do anything. So for this, all we're going to do, dead simple. Going to get the drill bit and I'm going to... Get it in the centre there, and I'm just going to drill that out. Again, this does not need to be neat. All I'm doing is widening the hole so the bulb can shine more light out. Now this is sticking a bit because this drill bit's not very good. There we go. Well, this pin vise is not very good. Uh, you could just widen this with the knife blade if you wanted to. I was going to do that first, but I forgot I had a, a pin vise. <laughs> yeah, so that's through there. Now if I had a bigger bit, of course I could make a bigger hole. And what I might do is just make that a bit bigger so that's the biggest drill bit i've got basically so what i can do if i want to again if you're doing this be very careful is widen this with my knife blade after you've done this and widen these holes i would recommend that you replace your knife blade if you've got a replaceable blade like on this one if you don't if you're just using a modeling knife i can't recommend enough these uh, swan morton blades we've got them in store at emodels.co.uk who i'm making this video for they've got these and packs of blades and stuff so do go and check them out. Ten blades will last you yeah, a project like this nicely, no problem. But again, if you're a younger builder, do get someone to help you out with this bit. I'm known as Captain Stabberty for obvious reasons, but I'm also almost 50 years old and I've been doing this for a long time. So although I'm known as Captain Stabberty, I don't actually do Stabberty on myself that often. It's not often that happens. Right, so that should probably be enough. We can adjust it if we need to. We'll do some lighting tests before we start all the painting up and stuff. But we can always widen these. These bits aren't going to get painted anyway because they're purely structural and internal. So there we go. So now we're not going to have a little pinprick of light and we're not going to have just those little top bars covered in light. We're going to have the whole back wall with light pouring through it. And it might not work. It might be a complete disaster. But this will now sit in here. Like that. And again, it's another fiddly bit that you have to have 15 pairs of hands. That would sit in there, thusly. Let me get the tweezers. Where's my tweezers? Let's do it properly, Fox. That would sit in. I'm not going to push it all the way because once it's in, it won't come out again. You see, that sits in there and the bulbs face upwards at an angle, about 45 degrees. That little tiny pinhole with nothing. So now what we'll have is we'll have the LED bulbs in there with all the light in the universe coming out of them and illuminating the whole back wall. And that'll be much better. Now you would normally at this point, if you're just building it, you put the wiring and lighting in here, but I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna leave that to last till later on uh, because we're gonna get the cockpit and stuff painted. So that sits in there. Uh, now it does actually, does it lock into there? There's a square tab here and there's a square hole here and the twain shall meet, I think, I think. I don't want to be too violent and aggressive because I don't want things to go in and never come out again. Uh, this will sit on top. Now I have tried to remove, take, put this on and take it off before and it's a hell of a job getting this on and off again. So yeah, do take your time, but be careful. Don't push it in too firmly or too far because once it's on, you might have trouble getting it off again. So that will sit on there, like that. We'll see. Where's it going now? Makes no sense. I'm not even looking at the bits that go in where. There we go. I think. Do we? No. no. Yes, there we go. There's like a tong here that goes over the top. Like there, to see. Uh, and it fits together around nicely. Now there is, I have to say, there is a bit of a gap here. Mmm, bit of a gap, you see. And there is a bit of a gap here. Now this gap here just looks like a panel line between these panels. So that don't care about that. That's fine. Uh, this one. Yeah, and this one. 
I can't remember if that's supposed to be on the actual real thing or not. So these two we might have to sort out later on when it comes to uh, getting the final building and painting done. We'll get, get the cockpit painted, get all this assembled and then perhaps do some sort of filler on here. Now when you put the canopy frame over the top as well, again there is a bit of a, a bit of a gap. Now, I'm going to be gluing this in so that's fine. That's going to be fine when it's glued in and that yeah there's a slight gap but it's not the end of the world once it's all glued in place it would probably be fine but I'm not sure yet we'll have to think about this when it comes to nearer the time but yes yeah, so there's definitely a gap there you could put a greeble on there if you weren't worried about accuracy or we could fill it I'm not sure yet anyway that's the tube part so we've got some other bits to do we have to add these three parts here now if you are doing like me you're assembling and then going to take it all apart again I do recommend it's a common sense thing. Some of these parts all look very similar. And if you look in the instructions here, it does say uh, that you have to be specific. These three parts, uh, this one, 17, has a big gap here and a small gap there. So you need to know which is which. So all I've done is on the inside of each one, I've marked the part number. So that's number 17. That's number whatever that is. I can't read it. And that's number eight, 19. So that's probably number 18. So it's worth, when you're doing this kind of assembly and disassembly, especially if you're doing Gumpler and things like this, uh, if it's got a lot of parts and they're all very similar it is worth just marking down on the part somewhere that you're not going to see it uh, so we need 18 first which is this one no, uh, that one uh, which is that shape that goes under here now these are the parts we're going to use if you're using these are the ones you need to use if you're doing the photo etch part uh, there are two options there's the photo etch grill that goes along here or there's just a solid plastic grill we're using the photo etch so I want 17 and remember 17 says big gap little gap big gap little gap cardboard box sorry couldn't resist so we want a uh, big gap at the bottom there you can see that big gap and little gap there big gap little and then drop it so I have to do it all again big gap little gap cardboard box yes yeah, so if, you, if you're not doing the photo etch uh, if you get the non um, premium version of this kit you can use the solid part system which just simulate the same thing as the photo etch so this is a bit of a tight fit if, if I seem like I'm being really cautious and careful and a bit fiddly with the parts it's because I am because again I don't want to jam something in that's never going to come apart because that will be sadness uh, and 19 same again you want the big gap at the bottom so big gap there do on camera big gap there little gap at the top uh, which yes there we go and that will just sit on there like that now on these instructions remember what I said they've got the little bunny ears symbol here that's what this bunny ears symbol mean the bunny ears symbol means pay attention that symbol is on the bottom so the long this gap here so that bunny ears corresponds to the bottom bit which means that bit goes there and the same here you've got just the, the shape and the symbol symbols at the bottom so make sure the gap at the bottom is big that's how those bunny ear symbols work now this bit here we're just we're ignoring this in the instructions because this is if you're doing the plastic part and not the actual photo etch part now i'm not going to attach the photo etch part because the photo etch part is held in place down here with the plastic piece but up here it's held in place with glue and i don't want to do that because i need to take it all apart again so yeah we're not doing that just yet so this is going to be the slowest build ever how long i've been doing this now 45 minutes or something i don't know forever this build uh, now we do have some little greeble details you one which needs to go on how's this going out this goes like it's very hard to see oh there we go it shows on a diagram it goes on your part you one this is confusing part you one this is the peg at the bottom and this is the sort of like the almost like a distributor cap on the top this image here corresponds to this bottom part because i was looking at the top of it thinking it was nothing like this because it looks like that. yeah this is the this bit here this little white area is the bottom part so it needs to go that way around right that was confusing so the little peg on the bottom has a has a little sort of t-shape so that goes in there let's get it in the tweezers now this is hard for me to do because it is on camera and the camera's in the way so this is probably going to ping and I'm going to have great fun with this 
Let's see if we can do this on camera and not ping it across the carpet. Uh, where does it go? It goes there. Yeah, so it's not just a circular hole. It's a circular hole with a little key. It's like a lock and key tab. There we go. Get in. Go on. Yeah. No. This is where you'll have lots of uh, fast forwarding now because it's just going to task me, isn't it? Let's try that the tweezers. Unfortunately, this will be a lot of this build. Now, I am thinking going forward, a lot of this build may just be sort of time lapse because when it comes to doing things like the main hole, it's going to be lots and lots of tiny little parts like these. And there's no way I can sit and let you suffer. <sighs> hours of that given this is one part I'm trying to get on now one single part and I can't get it in because my big clamp hands come on in you go get in oh. you clearly need tiny hands for this yep there we go it's in it's in right now I'm going to glue these in because these are just little greebles so a little touch of Tamiya extra thin on the inside Done, and that's permanently fixed forever it doesn't matter that I'm gluing these in now uh, because they're not critical they're not going to get in the way of anything I need a part W12 and I know you won't see this on camera but part W12 there's two of them they look just like remember that the original studio model was a lot of kit bash parts this if I had to say what it was, I would say that was a RCS thruster quad from something like an Apollo era spacecraft of some sort. And I think Bandai have done a fantastic job of reproducing. Maybe you can see it a bit better once it's in place. It's that little bit there. That little bit there. I don't know if it'll be in focus. That little bit. It's a quad thruster. It's a quad RCS uh, array. And it looks fantastic so i think that bandai have done a fantastic job of where's that gone fantastic job of recreating all the little greebles on there that goes in there a little touch of the glue yes these are little tiny greebles they're not getting in the way of anything there's nothing else that needs to connect in before they're applied so i can quite happily glue these on and knowing they'll never come off in transit so that's that bit there we have another w12 to put on now i didn't know this but those little that little uh, quad thruster rcs thruster unit there's two of them one of them goes on the side of the cockpit and i didn't know but that the falcon has an rcs thruster quad where you'd expect there to be a thruster quad because that's what thruster that's what those quad thrusters are for little reaction control system thrusters that, so it's quite nice that i never knew that was there it's the beauty of these now i don't know whether the it was added to the studio model to actually look like a, a thruster quad whether it was just added because it was cool looking and they put it on because it looked cool i don't know but i'm going to glue that in place but carefully what i'm actually going to do should i I don't want to risk gluing anything that's underneath it. So I'm going to quickly take this apart. Give me two seconds, I'll get that apart. There you go. So I took it all apart, glued that on, and put it all back together again. I just wanted to make sure that when I was putting glue on here, it wasn't running inside anywhere and gluing this outer hole to the inner cockpit thing. So just to make sure. Don't want to glue anything to anything anywhere that I don't need to go somewhere. Yes. So that's that on. We have this big doohickey here which needs to go that way. This goes underneath, this goes under here. Uh, and I'm not gonna glue it in though because it, oops, it does overlap ever so slightly the photo etch part. So I don't wanna glue that in because if I glue this in then I can't get the photo etch part in which would be kind of stupid. So that's just gonna sit there for a moment. Uh, I will have to, what I'll probably do is when I've finished this, I'll take it apart again and I'll put it in a bag with just the bits for the cockpit tube, for example, because I can't put the photo etch on until such time as I've, you know, glued the, I mean, I can't put this on until I've glued the photo etch on and I can't put the photo etch on until I've glued everything together and painted the interior. So yeah, so that's just going to sit on there. Uh, and then we have you 
U2. I hate U2. <laughs> Can't stand U2. Uh, we have U2, which goes up here, goes in this little bit here. And again, this is one that holds the photo etch in, I think. Or it might not. I don't think, no, maybe don't, don't think so. Maybe it does. No, I don't think it does. That just sits sits on there and then we have u21 which just sits in here like that fill in that hole lovely uh, again i don't want to glue that in because that's that's something i can glue in later it's not a problem it, 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 there are some things that i won't need to glue in. i won't have to actually glue that in if i don't want to but i can wait till the cockpit's installed and i can glue it in and we can do all the painting so and then j20 which i will be able to glue in uh, J20 is that way around. J20 goes into these two little slots here and here. So that will sit there. I'm being very gentle with this because this is delicate, delicate time. A thin spindly tube of which there are many, 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 many on this kit. So that just sits on there. Now this can be glued in. Totally touch the glue to it here. Just a tiny touch and just a tiny touch. Uh, and the reason this is molded as a separate piece is because you've got this little bar here that's got a gap underneath it and it's probably it's a good way to increase the part count because you've got this little rod that goes this little bar goes across here it's a good way to increase the part count but also you couldn't really mold that gap very easily it'd be quite tricky to get that molded on with the gap underneath the tube so i can understand why they've kept that as a separate separate part uh, and then this piece sits on here like that and i think we can actually glue that on that bit doesn't really matter so we push this one down splodooge push it in all the way home make sure it's in be careful of the greebles we just put on that now there is a bit of gap but that might be intentional there might be a bit of hole that lines up against this so i'm not too stressed about it right now but if it needs correction later on, I've got the option of taking it all apart again. So there you go. And it's not going to come out. That's, that's permanent now. Right. So that's where we are so far. We've got little bits glued on. I'm not going to do the photo etch. I can see how it all goes together. Uh, I may have to do something with this. I don't know yet. We'll see. The, the cockpit, like I say, the cockpit canopy frame, that will naturally fill itself once it's glued in place and taped. It does mean that we're going to have to paint the interior of the canopy frame and then glue this in place uh, and hope that the glue on the outside doesn't get into the inside and mess up the paint of the interior of the canopy frame i'm sure it'll be fine and what we'll have to do as well is paint the cockpit before we assemble all the hull around it and mask off basically we'll paint the cockpit we'll build this i will then paint the interior of the canopy frame let it dry get it varnished weathered and stuff with the cockpit this will be placed on top well there'll be masking tape put on the inside this will be placed on top, glued in place. Everything can be sprayed because there'll be masking tape on the inside. Everything will be sprayed, the whole body will be sprayed. And then when it's finished, you can simply push through with the masking tape and pull it out. And you'll have a perfectly painted cockpit that's not been covered up by the whole color. That's the plan, that's the plan. Yeah, see I'm used to the, the, the fine molds one where you can just pull the cockpit nozzle, this bit of the cockpit off completely and you can paint the inside and it's a doddle to go together. This is a bit more tricky, so we'll have to do some planning and thinking. But that's gonna do it for this episode. As I say, with this build going forward, a lot of it's gonna be tiny parts that's pointless to me trying to film because you'll be sitting there watching the top of my head. So a lot of it might be time-lapse stuff where I just say, right, now we're gonna build a mandible and I just build a mandible. And I might stop it every now and then to point something out important. But other than that, it might just be a bit of time-lapse stuff until it's all built and then we can do proper filming of the painting and weathering because that's where the majority of this is it's really going to be about painting weathering and me pointing out a few bits here and there that you might need to know but that's going to do us for now so thank you very much for watching don't forget as always this has been filmed for emodels.co.uk uh, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs my channel sponsors and supporters so do go along to their website and check out it's basically anything you need they've got it if they haven't got it you don't need it they'll have something equally as good that is a good alternative that you can pick up instead but yes that's going to do us so thank you very much for watching take care of yourselves go make something awesome go be awesome and until next time i shall say adios amoebas emodels.co.uk
make something awesome.